We all have areas of influence and impact, but how we operate within them is what will lead to either our continued success or to our destruction. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, my name is Asia and welcome to Succeeding in Influence, a four-week series that will be taking place here on my channel every single Wednesday at 9 a.m. You can expect an upload, so make sure that you stay with us for these next three weeks. Next week, we will be talking about how we can get dressed spiritually so that way we can pull up to places spiritually equipped for the assignment that God has called us to so we can succeed in influence. I'm so excited about this series, you guys. And today I am here to pop off this series by telling you God wants you to check your foundation. How are you operating your life? What is guiding your decisions and your perspective? What have you built your business upon? What have you built your life upon? What have you built your parenting skills upon? Is it through your experience here on earth, what you saw other people go through? Is it from your education? Is it from what you've seen others do successfully or the lack of wanting to repeat history? It's time to check and see if it is sand. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who has built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. When we build a life based on the Bible and live in intimacy with God, we are building on rock. So what were the words that Jesus spoke? Because as we see in Matthew 24 through 27, it says that everyone who does these words of mine will have built their house on a rock. Well, what were those words? We can take a look back and we see that Jesus outlines many instructions, okay? He gives us all the tea because he really wants to see us walk in victory. So because he has outlined everything for us, he's telling us, how we ought to live our life. The most important aspect of his instruction is for us to abide. Abiding is the secret sauce. I love this illustration that my pastor gave. He basically compared it to tea. He said, you can either take your tea, put it in hot water and keep dunking it, or you can just drop your tea bag in there and let it abide. Let it sit there. And as it sits there, the hot water is going to do its thing and the tea will seep out. And that's a great illustration. I love it. That is what it means to abide. You just hanging out with God all day long. You're taking a awareness of God and your need for him everywhere you go. And you're accessing him through prayer and your recollection of his word, your reading of his word. You're tapping into his resources that you have access to here on earth. That is abiding, recognizing and understanding a continued need and dependency for Christ. So in this video, we will be discussing how to abide, but I want it to be a interactive experience. I want you to be able to watch this video and actually determine where you are. So throughout this discussion, I will be sharing with you the process to evaluate the foundation of anything in your life, any area of your life, in every area of life where you and I are tasked with responsibility and given influence, we must be wise with how we steward that role. So I have eight questions that you can ask and I'll provide biblical standards and truth that you can utilize to weigh against your answer to each question. So let's get into it. The first question is, am I intimate with God? Answer it honestly, okay? But let me explain what intimacy with God is. Now, I'm sure many of us know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But I really love John 15, 1 through 17, and I want to break it down together. That way we can look at a standard we can utilize to measure our actions in our life up against, okay? So I hope you got your tea, your notepad, grab your Bible, and let's read this together. 15 and 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. 
He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, that my joy may be complete in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give to you. This is my command. Love each other. Quality time with God. Knowing God's word. Consuming God's word. Spending time in prayer. Praying his will. These are all a part of remaining connected to the vine. Verse 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. I feel like we can't even dig into this for real without knowing what it means to bear fruit. And I believe that Galatians 5 and 22 lists it out beautifully, okay? It says, the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are what God wants to see in us. It is to our Father's glory that we bear those things, that those things are present within our lives, within our actions. You see them all over me. I see them all over you. That is to God's glory. And so he's saying, ask for whatever you wish to accomplish this. When we are going about our daily lives, are we allowing our decisions to be guided by the standards in God's word? Jesus made everything he learned from our heavenly father known to us. It's all in the book. It's all right there for us. But we have to go look. We have to go seek. We have to go get it. And this wisdom and these standards, they should guide the way that we live. We have to ask ourselves the next question, which is, am I obedient? <laughs> Do I obey God? Is that a part of my desires? In John 15, we're told the pruning and the cutting is inevitable. Pruning happens to those who bear fruit so they can bear even more fruit, but cutting happens to those who don't bear no fruit. The caveat is that we can't even bear fruit unless we remain in him. <laughs> Like you telling me I'm going to get cut, burned and thrown into the fire if I don't have any fruit and that if I do have a little bit of fruit, you're going to prune me so I can bear more fruit. Well, let me at least have a little bit of fruit, at least in that scenario. I'm winning, right? I mean, the beauty of our relationship with God is that he gives us the knowledge to know how to make decisions in our everyday life, but he also provides the strength to us through his Holy Spirit. So he's not just asking us to do things 
but he has given us all that we need pertaining to life and godliness. He's made sure that we're fully equipped to do the work which he has set before us. He's made sure that we're fully equipped to obey what he has called us to do. The issue is not that we can't do it. The issue is that we're relying on our own strength. And that is why we fail. (laughs) And this is obedience in action. It is being in a situation, being able to look at what's in front of you, being able to discern what biblical principle do I need to apply here? How should I respond? What piece of armor should I grab? What should I be doing right now? Not figuring out a solution in my own strength and instead taking it in prayer to God. That takes discipline. Praying and trusting God while I do what I know to do always results in more of his wisdom and guidance. Though it's a work of the Holy Spirit to sanctify us and complete the work started in us, we still have to choose to live our lives in obedience to God. Verse nine says, as the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. We can't remain in intimacy with God and willfully sin. There's going to be disruption in our intimacy with God if we continue to willfully sin, unrepentant sin. I don't care. I'm going to sin. I want to do what I want to do because I want to do it. I don't care what level it's on on your morality scale, but to God, sin is sin. And we should forever be in a repentant state before him, being willing to be purified and to be made more like Christ. Willfully sinning, abiding in sin, being okay with sin, and being close to God, they don't, that don't happen. The two do not coexist together. It is impossible. If someone is saying that they can sin and be in close intimacy with God, they are lying. The Holy Spirit is always sanctifying us and giving us opportunities to repent and to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. This is not to motivate us to try to create obedience within ourselves. It's not about us, okay? It's not about our strength. It's not about our willpower. It's not about us at all. But rather, this verse is telling us to rely on Jesus. Y'all gotta look back at verse four with me, okay? Verse four says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. You can't do it without him. I can't do it without him. We can't do it without him. This is why the Holy Spirit has been given to us because we need help to walk in righteousness. It is not a work of us. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Our only job is to call on the Lord and ask for his help. (laughs) Our only job is to recognize our weakness so that his strength can be made perfect in it. It's not about us. It's all about him. And he has done the work for us. (laughs) He died for our righteousness and gifted it to us. Therefore, we must allow the Holy Spirit to transform us and be transformed by the renewal of our mind. We walk in discipline, but it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit. We must be dependent on him, which we will talk more about this later in the video. But when it comes to being obedient, many things can stand in the way. It can be our own rebellion. It could be our own pride. It could be because we just don't trust God. (laughs) But the beautiful thing about our relationship with Jesus is that we can submit all these things to him in prayer. Like I have told God, I don't trust you to protect me. And, you know, that's a really, really scary thing to say. But it really was a situation within my home that made me realize that I didn't trust the Lord to protect me because I was wanting to control the outcomes of situations. And I realized like, hmm, why am I trying to control so much? I don't trust God to work these situations out. And that was a hard pill to swallow. But taking that to God in prayer, it helps me to first and foremost, address it with the Lord and allow him to shift my perspective and allow him to help me see him in situations that have broken my trust with him. I literally had situations in my childhood where I felt like the Lord wasn't there. I felt like he didn't protect me. So being able to be open in prayer and say, hey God, like, where were you? Where were you here? Where was your hand? Like what was going on? Why can't I see you here? Why did you allow this? You know, being able to 
talk to the Lord about that and for him to literally go back and say, Asia, this is me. This is how I covered you. This is what happened. Like having that level of intimacy with God, it helps me to trust him more and always defaulting back on the truth of the word, which is that God is good. He's always doing all things good. (laughs) God is good. So just embracing that truth and that fact of relying on the fact that God is good, even when I don't understand, has been immensely helpful. But God is so loving and gracious in that even when we ask him to help us to see, to help us to work through these things, he is faithful and just to not only forgive us for our wrong and our errors, but to help us to see him more clearly. Asking God to give us a clean heart, to transform us, to grow us in the knowledge of God and in our identity in Christ. Like these are the essential prayers that we need in moments of weakness, like truly praying and looking for the way of escape that God promises in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It's essential when we're dependent on God, when we're praying in times of struggle, it allows us to see more clearly. And God does promise that. He promises that he will always provide a way of escape in every temptation. Not believing God, doubting God, like these are all different temptations that we can fall into because of what has happened to us or, you know, because of what we've seen or whatever the case may be. There's always going to be opportunities for us to worry, to doubt, to be afraid or for us to get angry or for us to be bitter, whatever the case may be. Insert thing here that could draw a wedge between us and our ability to love others well It's always going to be there, but we can pray and we can ask the Lord to help us, to keep us from going into self-protection, pride, fear, whatever, anger, bitterness. We can pray and ask the Lord for that. So let's talk about this dependency versus pride thing because we can't successfully be intimate with God and walk in obedience while we still walk with self-sufficiency and pride. Like self-sufficiency and pride do not go in the mix Okay, it just doesn't work. So the question to ponder is, am I independent? Matthew 5 gives us Christian characteristics that we should all have. I love Matthew 5. I never knew that the Beatitudes broke down Christian characteristics the way that they do. I used to always think that blessed are the poor in spirit meant people who are poor, they are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven because they don't have no money here on earth. But when you die, you're going to be rich. But This is not what it means (laughs) at all whatsoever. What a grave misunderstanding of the scripture because there is so much more richness here for us as believers. Being poor in spirit is to be dependent on God. Like this has nothing to do with money, but it has everything to do with our personal perspective about ourselves in relation to God. Like we're really broke spiritually. We are spiritually bankrupt. Everything we have is only because of God's grace. Every gift, every talent, every ability, every breath you breathe is God's. You don't have nothing down to your socks, okay? Those are even God's. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. God provides everything and there is no adversity that could ever touch our path without first going through his hands. He literally is our sustainer. We are fully dependent on him, whether we realize it or not. Even those living with a wickedness and a rejection of God, they still are dependent on him because he is still sustaining it all. Life cannot exist without him. But here's the thing. When we truly believe that we are capable of carrying ourselves with what he has given us, Then we enter into prideful waters and the Bible promises that pride will always precede the fall. This is in Proverbs 16 and 18. And this will either happen through our repentance or through God humbling us because uh, (laughs) Proverbs also talks about how God takes it upon himself. Like it is his role and his responsibility to humble the proud. Like you're making yourself an enemy of God when you operate in pride. So either you will repent and humble yourself that way through repentance and in seeing yourself in, in the right way in relation to God, or God will humble you. He will bring you low. Those are the only two responses to pride. (laughs) 
humility or God bringing you down. When we see our money, our platform, our success, our talent, our relationships, our jobs, whatever, 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 as the source for our stability and not God, ooh, we have entered into self-sufficiency and pride. And at that point, when whatever thing we are seeing as our source is seen as our stability, then boy, oh boy, we are no longer dependent on God because we think that our money can save us, our job can save us, our talents can save us, our platform can save us, our family can save us, whatever the case may be. We have put our trust in that. A proper perspective is to recognize that everything that we have is God's and that he's graciously given it to us. Additionally, you know, God is our source and everything else is a resource that he uses to provide for us. Everything. And he can use whatever resource he wants to use. It doesn't matter what the resource is. It's all going back to God, right? When we operate from this space of understanding that God uses whatever resources he desires to provide, then the kingdom of heaven will provide what we need. Everything from resources to healing, to restoration, and even strategy and wisdom are all graciously provided to us because we depend solely on God. And it is this humility that is so essential in our sphere of influence because dependence on God keeps us safe from pride and it keeps us safe from improper perspective, which could rob us of the position and space which God has placed us. If we get placed somewhere and we really start to believe that we are all that in a bag of chips, we then put ourselves in a position to need to be humbled. And I don't want that. And I know you don't want that neither. So let's talk about our next question, which is, do I bear fruit? Do I bear fruit? We know that to bear fruit, we must be intimate with Jesus. And to be intimate, we must be obedient, which God empowers us to do through the Holy Spirit. So increasing in the knowledge of God helps us to bear fruit. Reading our Bible, reading our Bible, reading our Bible and gaining understanding. It helps us to bear fruit. Fruit. It helps us to love. It helps us to have joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. We have to reflect and see the areas of our life and the decisions that we make where we may not bear fruit. Like, really take a look. Look at the areas of your life where you don't bear fruit and really take them to God in prayer and ask the Lord to help you and ask him for forgiveness. I didn't bear fruit in a lot of areas, okay? <laughs> this is also talked about heavy in my wilderness testimony. So if you haven't watched it, please go watch it. I share so much about my refining process that God has been doing in me, but I didn't bear fruit. The, I heard the Lord say, Asia, where's your fruit? And I didn't know what he was talking about, I mean, I got a little scared. I was like, what do you mean where's my fruit? Like I bear fruit, like I'm loving, I'm kind, I'm gracious, I'm giving to people. But I was not bearing fruit in my business. I was not bearing fruit in my business. I was doing things in my own way. And the Lord showed me that money was an idol. And again, if you haven't seen my testimony video, go watch it. I'm not gonna dive in deep here, but there was a lot of idols and there was a lot of things attached to my identity that should not have been there. And just asking the Lord, just going before the Lord and allowing him to shine light on the places in me, it changed everything. And it really got me to a space to where I could become more connected to the vine, where I could grow in intimacy with Christ. And in that, it then produced fruit. I mean, but it was, it did take refining and it did take repentance. We can bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Us being able to turn from our sin, that is what leads to us bearing fruit. So if you are realizing that, oh my goodness, I'm falling short in these areas, please, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Do not allow that to keep you from pressing towards the Father. Take your sin to the cross. Bring it to God in prayer and ask the Lord to help you, okay? So that brings us to our next question because, I mean, clearly we need to be repentant. So I want you to ask yourself, am I repentant? Am I repentant for my sin? The things that I am being shown 
through my intimacy with Christ that are not like him? Am I repentant over those things? See, the thing is, as we grow in our intimacy with God, there is a strong promise in the word which says, as we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. And God is a light, meaning that he illuminates everything and he will reveal what is in the dark, right? And so because God is coming near to us, sin that was hidden is now brought out. And when God reveals that sin to us, it is our responsibility to repent, not to say, "Mm -mm, God, that's not in me. Mm -mm, I don't have that issue. That ain't me. But to say, okay, Lord, I repent and please refine me. Please remove it. Please give me a clean heart. Give me a clean mind. Purify me. Our nature will be brought to the light. God's word and his presence will illuminate sin in our lives. It is our job and our role to repent and to turn from such sin. But when we deny and refuse to walk away from what God reveals in his word and in his presence, then we are calling him a liar, which we all know is not true. (laughs) God is not a man that he would lie and his word is true always. Therefore, we must align our thoughts, our feelings, emotions, and preferences with the truth in his word. His word must trump them all, which means God is always right. God is always right. He is always good and he is always the best. Living a repentant, dependent, intimate life with God always leads to growth and maturity, which leads us to our next question. Do I have character? When you walk with God intimately, he will refine you. He will grow you. We all will face tests and trials of various kinds, and that is to produce hope, character, and endurance. But we are also called to walk in integrity. As Colossians 1 and 10 says, walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. A great place to start with this is the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, which I hinted at earlier. We already talked about dependency on God, which is being poor in spirit, but there are many other dispositions and they all promise a different blessing from the Father. These include viewing sins as God views it. This includes being submitted to God, having a spiritual appetite for righteousness, expressing compassion, being unmixed with the world, promoting peace and harmony, keeping our stand with Christ, even though we may face varying levels of rejection. All of those are outlined in Matthew 5. And I 110 recommend that you go and read Matthew 5, study it, use commentaries, do what you got to do to dig deep, get a study Bible, whatever it takes. You also can go to OCBF and there is a whole series on Beatitudes from Pastor Tony Evans. And it is phenomenal. It is amazing. That is what really helped ground me in this. Um, So I highly recommend studying these and walking in them because there is so much practical application that can be utilized on a daily basis, which leads me to my next question. Am I disciplined? Am I applying God's word and principles on a daily basis? Am I thoughtfully living out my life according to God's word? I know it's very hard to remain balanced in our thinking regarding our role and what we experience here on earth. It's so easy to think that we're saved by our works, but we are not. Salvation is a gift from God. But our experience here on this side of heaven It is closely tied to our intimacy with God. Like they are directly correlated, okay? Our obedience to what he instructs will impact our life here because there are consequences to our actions, but God also provides a blessing in our obedience. His word isn't just to be read, but as James says, we need to be doers and not just hearers of the word. And this honestly takes discipline. How often do you think before you speak? How often are you submitting your decisions before God and asking him to direct your steps? Are you trying to walk in the fruits of the spirit as you love your neighbor and serve in your areas of influence? 
Or are you just doing your own thing? We got to cover this in prayer and ask the Lord to reveal areas where we can grow in discipline. And we have to ask him to illuminate the way. What I've learned is that it's honestly a step-by-step thing. One step of obedience to God is all it takes. And then you just put it on repeat. Walk in that first area of, of obedience and then God will give you another. And before you know it, you'll look back and you'll see how far he's brought you. But a big part to see if we truly bear fruit and a big way to see if we truly are disciplined and loving and obedient is in our interaction with others. We are commanded to love others. And to do that, we must be connected. So you got to ask yourself, Am I connected to the body? That's our next question. (laughs) Every believer needs a biblically sound church where they can serve and grow. I know, I get it. You can grow close to God on your own. I am someone who literally read the Bible in college and the intimacy with God was insane. I'm someone who through Bible studies and prayer parties in my apartment, I'm someone who literally experienced God tangibly on my own with a Bible, but I will let you know that that's not enough. You need community. You need to be plugged into a biblically sound church because it is um, commanded in the word, like it's required of us, but also because it is a part of our experience with God as well. He utilizes us to encourage one another and build each other up in the faith. So we should not be lone rangers out here in these streets. The Bible tells us that it's important to gain wisdom from each other. It also says that being wise in our own eyes is very dangerous and that there is safety within the counsel of many. So if you're building without any accountability, wisdom, godly wisdom, encouragement, and biblical support, then you're in some dangerous territory because the heart is deceitful above all else. And if you have no one else to do some checks and balances with, you very much well could be going on your own desires and be straying away from the Lord. So I'd encourage you to submit this area in prayer and ask God to lead you to a biblically sound church if you're not in one already, okay? For us to have a firm foundation, we must build our lives on the truth of God's word. We cannot allow pride to be the thing that clouds our perspectives. Everything we have is because of God, literally, everything. And because of that, we must remember that we are positioned where we are positioned in our areas of influence for God's glory. Therefore, we must utilize his word, the community that he has blessed us with, and we must use those to gain wisdom to know how to operate within our areas of influence. From our prayer and our intimacy with God, is where we make decisions and we submit all of our plans to God. We operate within our knowledge, our gifts, our talents and abilities. You know, we don't pretend like we don't have those, but none of those things trump God's word. None of those things trump God's instruction. We always ultimately submit to Christ. And through our journey, of trusting and relying on him, we will be pruned. And ultimately, the best part, we will bear much fruit. So I need you to chime in down below. I want to know what is your area of influence? Where has God called you particularly? And I want to know what stood out today. Was there a key takeaway or something that you would like to add to the conversation? We all need to know. Okay, so do not hold out on us. We're all growing together. So definitely share that down in the comments down below if you have a testimony related to this or just share your area of influence. And I want to challenge every everyone to pray for at least one comment down below. Make sure that you like it after you pray for it, because I am going to go back and look at the comments and the ones that don't have likes. I will pray for those particularly specifically and making sure that everyone has been prayed for. But yes, 
in the comments, chime in down below and make sure that you join us for next episode next week at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesday. We will be going live with episode two. So I can't wait to see you there. You can subscribe down below to ensure that you do not miss that upload. And y'all take care, stay blessed, and I will see you guys next week. Bye guys. Bye.